What's up, everyone? Welcome to Trainer Talk episode, I think one three. Yeah, three. It is three. Um, definitely three. We're with Dom, the officially best-selling author of Walk Yourself Wealthy and How to Be a Dog Superhero, of which I have read both. So why don't you introduce yourself, Dom, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, mate. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's a real honor, and I'm really delighted to finally meet you. Um, we uh, we we're, Until today, we've only been connected through sort of social media, haven't we, and Facebook, but um, yeah, yeah on, f from a personal note, you're someone who's always been very supportive of me, and I hope I have been of you as well, so uh, we get, you know, there's a lot of slagging off and stuff in the dog training world, isn't there, but um, th th there, there are lots of nice people out there as well, so it's finally, it's really nice to meet one face to face. <laughs> um, we should get into that as well, Dom, um, not yet, but I'll just write it down. Um, for everyone that doesn't know, Walk Yourself Wealthy is Dom's book about um, marketing of a dog walking company. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people that are new in this world get a big shock about how bitchy it can be. So I think we should brush on that later on. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries, buddy. So um, anyway, introduction. Tell you, tell you yeah, yeah. So um, I um, my name's Dom Hodgson. Just to confirm that, uh, I'm. A dog trainer, a dog adventurer, and I'm also a pet business coach. Um, and I live in Sunderland, up in the northeast, not too far away from uh, from yourself. Um, I I help I help pet dog owners to have a bit more fun and a bit more control with their dogs, and I help pet business owners to have a bit more fun and make a bit more money in their business. Really, that's my kind of my two uh, my two superpowers, if you like. Love it, love it. <laughs> which 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 side do you prefer? Just on a personal note. Ah, oh, good question. It's um, it's really weird because uh, I would, I would always want to be working with dogs. You know, I, I will always want to work with dogs, and it's um, because there's nothing like it, is there? You know, it's uh, it's 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 unique, really. Um, and obviously, dogs are class. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I I'm quite passionate, as you know, about the business side of things, the marketing, mm. and I'm uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm, I haven't killed it by any means but I'm and I've still got a long way to go on my own business but I've, I've invested a lot in the marketing and I've I'm, so I'm really passionate now about helping people to um, promote themselves well you know so that they can become as awesome at the business side of the things as they are at the dog training yeah for sure for sure so I, I fudged that question didn't I <laughs> no no that's <sorry>. right <laughs> I think what you're actually saying is I like them both equally because they're so different <laughs> yeah yeah okay good lad <laughs> Right, let's start with James's questions before I forget about them. How, James, this is a really shit question. Um, it's not, it's a good question, but there's not an answer to it. So you're just going to have to give tips. How would you up conversion rates? So people are looking at your stuff, they're saying, oh my God, your dog's incredible. How do we get them in? Um, whew, Jesus, that's a, that is a loaded question, isn't it? Um, right. <laughs> it it's, I think you have to think about the whole marketing picture, really, you know what I mean? Um, and it comes right down to, starts with sort of who do you want to serve, you know, who, do you, who, who are the type of people that you want to have in your business, um, who, who, who do you want to be working with, and then, you know, targeting those people so that you're, obviously, that it doesn't matter how good you are, you can't, you know, it doesn't matter how tasty your sausages are, you ain't going to sell any to vegetarians, you know, or it doesn't matter how... Um, John, my mentor, is fond of saying, "Doesn't matter how good your condoms are, you aren't going to sell very many to Catholic nuns." You know, so so you have to make sure that your service is really targeted at the people who who you can actually help. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of wastage. You're going to let it get get a lot of people clicking on your adverts uh, or click, you know, or landing on your Facebook page that that aren't a really good, very good fit for what you do. And then you need to be super targeted with 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 your your message for who you can help and how you can help them. Um, and I think we just we brushed upon this very quickly, didn't we, before um, we started, Jay? But there's a uh, with dog walkers, dog trainers, and dog groomers as well. There's a there's a there's a need to feel like you have to provide everything for everybody, um, like at any price, and uh, you'll serve any, any any breed, and you'll offer bespoke services to everyone. And you can't offer bespoke services to everyone. It's just not it's not possible, is it? You know, not unless you're charging like ten thousand pounds a, a training session or something. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, yeah, completely. So and we'll, no, that we'll go into well a bit more that, detail, probably. Pardon? I think that's a good point as well. That there are people charging maybe not ten thousand, but thousands per session, and that's their niche. 
they only need five clients a month or five clients a week or whatever they want to. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you're charging ten pound a session, now you need numbers. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and it needs to be more. Um, it needs to be more systemized and scalable, and you know, with some ascension in there as well. So you have different uh, different levels of service to offer people. You know, so that there might be like an evergreen online offering, and then a, maybe it's a group session, and then and then the one to one stuff. You know, and they will ascend in price that uh, the the more and personal access that people are going to get to you. Upselling is generally a lot. I, I find it anyway to upsell an existing client is a lot easier than trying to get a client to come in at the top from zero. Always, 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 yeah, for sure. And, the, you know, there's pet business coaches out there who are um, just, it's like when you buy a red car and then all of a, su all of a sudden you see lots of red cars. Like, well, now that I've started doing the pet business coaching this year, you tend to see a lot of others. And the people are pushing, trying to teach people how to sell £2,000 programs, you know. And I'd, I'm not saying you can't sell £2,000 programs because you can, but you have to understand that it, it is at the... It it has the top end, end of, of what you're going to be offering, yeah, you know. So you have to be offering lots of other things, um, and building up a relationship with people before that, before they're going to be willing to hand over two grand. Hundred <laughs> percent. I think well, I think maybe for the we, this completely contradicts what we've just done, but for the first <laughs> half hour, let's talk about dog training. Yeah, let's training do it. Yeah, and, and then the second half, somehow between us, we'll try and coherently put together. <laughs> I've many years work we've got between us about how to, <laughs> how to run a business in this world because it's, it's yeah we'll do it you know? it is yeah for I sure, for sure. and yeah. we've made all the mistakes as well <laughs> oh you have not made as many as me trust me <laughs> don't back on it <laughs> I've been back for more times than I've had a hot dinner <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's, both of us are big on engagement and uh, people's dogs don't behave because to quote Dom, their owners are too fucking boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my story and how I got into the whole dog training thing. Yeah, might yeah, be a good place to start with this. Um, so I, I started this. I used to be a sales rep for a period tobacco. I used to sell cigarettes to corner shops and stuff, and it was a great job, really good job. Um, bonuses, company cars, paid holidays. Struggling to think why I left now, Jay, but it was like it was like a re it was like a really it was a really good job. But, but, I, <laughs> but I was kind of coasting, you know. I was kind of coasting, and I call it a midlife crisis or whatever you want. But I I probably would have been fired anyway. But anyway, I, I, I fancied a change. So the only two passions I had at the time were working outdoors. I knew I wanted to work outdoors if I could, and I took a bit of an interest in dog training. We recently adopted a dog to Bordeaux called Barry, who's on the front cover of um, How to Be a Dog Superhero, and. Uh, uh, and and obviously with any rescue dog, they come with like issues, don't they? They come with baggage. <laughs> so I, I, had, I had to sort of up my game a little bit with that. And um, and, and, and so, that, that, so I thought, and I had a lot of success exercising him. You know, he used to like going jogging and, and riding on the bike and stuff. Obviously me riding, him running alongside me. But uh, <laughs> he used to, um, he, he, so, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll start a dog sort of exercise business, you know. Um, and I'll offer, try and offer something more than just like a walk around the block. So Pack Leader Dog Adventures was born. That was my business. And it started to take off within sort of three or four months. The only problem was I, w I found that I was, um, so I was picking the dogs up, taking them to the beach. We've got loads of lovely beaches up here. Take them to the beach or the woods or something and, and going off for like a, a three or four mile hike. And then I would let them have a wee and, uh, and, and, and I would have a breather as well, obviously. <laughs> and they would, um, they would start sort of playing and stuff together, you know, and, and clarting around. And, and over time, over a couple of weeks, this play started to become more boisterous, started to become like more rough housing. And I was losing control, really, of the dogs, you know. And, uh, you, and in the you, end, at was, this point, then, were you just the transport to get them there, in their opinion? Yeah, yeah I guess I was, yeah. Yeah, I was just a chauffeur, really, you know. I was just a chauffeur <laughs> who was taking them out uh, somewhere nice where they could uh, have a little arse around. And... Um, but I, but I knew, I, but I didn't like it, you know. I knew um, I was sort of standing in the middle of this field with four or five leads, thinking, like, shit, this wasn't what I signed up for, you know. <laughs> like, like I, 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 there must be an easier way to do it than this. So a friend of mine recommended um, John Rogerson uh, and another couple of people. And as it happened, John was doing a dog training course at the Darling Dogs Trust a few months later. So I signed up for that. Uh, met David Davies there as well, um, another really highly respected dog trainer in the Northeast, um, really good friend of mine. 
amazing dog trainer. So I, I kind of kick-started my doggy edu education that way with John and then followed it through with Dave. Dave became like a mentor to me. And it was there that I learned how to sort of, the, the, the secret of dog training, really. <laughs> and I came home from the first or second day on the course and, and Beth, my wife, because obviously it costs quite a bit of money, doesn't it, these courses? And she said, yeah, uh, for sure. She said, you know, what, uh, so, you know, what did you learn? <laughs> you know, and I said, well. And you're like, no idea. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, well, I said, we just have to kind of play with the dogs more. <laughs> you know, and she was like, really? And I said, uh, yeah. I said, like, we just need to be, we just need to do more with the dogs. We're not doing enough with the dogs. So got on the floor with the dogs, got with a bunch of toys, started playing with my dog. Looked at me a little bit funny at first, but sure enough, he did come around and start to play. And then straight away, I started to do that with the dogs I was, I was adventuring with as well. And it transformed the business completely, you know, all of a sudden, I, then I became the guy who was able to walk down the beach with like five, six dogs, just, you know, following me like I was uh, Lord God Almighty. Um, and through doing no particular um, obedience with them or anything, well, we did some silly obedience, but, you know, it was just, it was just having fun, just basically making myself the center of these dogs' world. So then that, I got more into the dog training. This became part of my philosophy. Again, just standing on the shoulders of sort of Dave and John and lots of other dog trainers as well who, who preach this kind of thing. And, uh, and I kind of distilled it a little bit more and tried to make it super easy for pet dog owners to understand because I'm a very lazy dog trainer, Jay, I must be honest. <laughs> if, there's, if there's an easy way how to do anything... How can I make this gonna... really easy? <laughs> yeah, how can I make this really easy and not take very long at all? Um, well, let's find something that the dog likes and let's use that instead of trying to, you know, get him interested in something else. Um, and that kind of became my sort of, my thing really, you know, and that's what's in the book. That's how, I, you know, I've just finished a little seminar tour of the UK. And, um, and it, I think it's resonating with a lot of people. Awesome little seminar tour of the UK. You've been on the road for like fucking 10 years or something ridiculous. <laughs> no, Every single know. time I log onto my Facebook, it's like, oh, here's my new seminar in Timbuktu, and here's one in Bermuda. And... <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, we, we, are going, we are going abroad next year, though. <laughs> Do you really? But, uh, yeah, yeah, just UK this year, but we're, we're taking it abroad next year. Um, okay. So you get a client in mm -hmm. with... Fred, the German Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> and Fred is just a general asshole. What's your super simple lazy dog trainer way of fixing this quickly? I would say find you know find out what Fred likes. Yeah, find something that Fred likes first. It might be a tuggy toy. Um, it might be a ball. It's probably going to be some kind of toy. Do you know what I mean with a with a, with a German mm -hmm. Shepherd usually? Uh, and, you know, he's, the dogs have a bit of a chase instinct, or some of them have a lot of a chase instinct. Um, so if you, can, if you can just get that dog's attention with, with something, it doesn't even need to be a very expensive dog toy, you know. It could be a, a bit of hose towel. pipe or a tea towel or, yeah, you know, an old glove or something like that. You'd be surprised what your dog likes, what you might think not associate as being a toy. Uh, incidentally, this is something I learned from Dave. When I went down to Dave's, he brought this sort of murderer's bag out, um, like a black old bag and like dumped it on the floor and it was literally full of sort of bits of crap do you know what I mean just stuff like you got it out from a skip and uh, it taught me a very important lesson that day by playing with the dog with these bits of stuff by you know teaching me the lesson that it's not about the toy necessarily it's about what you do with it you know so I so was find just about it. to jump in there and discuss so many of my clients get stuck on like where do you get that tug from that rad dog tug I'm like it really doesn't matter what I've got this, all the toy allows me to do in my opinion is a, it's a tool to play with the dog. The dog's playing with me, not the toy. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I don't know if you follow John Rogers, but he's had quite a bit of fun lately on Facebook, um, ribbing people about this whole, you know, uh, dog trainers saying that the, the, the dog's interacting with the toy, and John's saying, he's not interacting with the toy, he's interacting with me, you know. The toy yeah, you is just the thing. Yeah, you put that toy on the floor, yeah. Yeah, the toy's just the thing that stops your hands getting bitten, isn't it? Yeah, it's me? just considerably better than a ragging my arm around, because that's yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, we're getting back to Fred, you know, whatever Fred likes, really, you know, if, if you walk a day in Fred's paws, you, you, I'm sure you'll come up with a couple of things that Fred likes picking up in, in the house, and, uh, or, you know, just move it around. Get, get his attention first, you know. Some dogs, I, I think a lot of the stuff that I do, Jay, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, my, my audience is primarily pet dog owners who, who really struggle to get their dog's attention, you know, so they struggle to get any, so that's why I, I suggest that they 
they, they do this relationship building thing like in their sitting room with the curtain shut mm-hmm. so they can you know get on the floor and and be a bit silly with their dog some dogs have a have a much higher sort of energy level and they don't need whipping up so much you know they might need more control but um but yeah that's that's where i would start for sure and do when you when you teach them to to play with fred do you teach them set games like i don't know who it is at the moment but there's this thing keeps popping up on my feed about 10 off-leash games for recall dvd or something um oh cat cat's on here she knows who it is um i'll get her to comment anyway um you know it's like set set things to train or do you just teach them literally you engage with me and we'll play yeah for sure yeah i would yeah just to get just to get it started you know and then um because there's, I mean, there is so much you can do, you know, there's so many games you can play and there's so many activities you can do if you're, if you're, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, you've got your obedience, your tribal, scent work, agility, all these different things, all these, but you know, for your pet dog owner who maybe a bit more like me, maybe they can't be asked to do any of that kind of thing, maybe they just want a dog that they, they take for a walk to, to the park on a night after, after work to chill out for an hour, you know, teaching them something basic like a bit of tuggy, a retrieve, maybe it's a find it game. You know, those three things alone are going to totally transform that dog's life. And uh, oh, massively, I've, massively. No, no, I've never had a dog who has sort of, you know, ha- after three or four find it games has said like, I'm bored, can we do something else now? Do you know what I mean? They, they generally, uh, and if they do, we just put the lead on and go back home. <laughs> Can we go now? Yes, you're back. <laughs> And I think that's important as well. I put a post up the other day about anthropomorphizing dogs and that I don't think we play on their natural instincts enough. You know, like, like you say, they've got a chase instinct. They've got prey drive. They want to search for things with their nose. You know, they don't want to sit on the sofa and watch Coronation Street. It's not their thing. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> you liar. <laughs> no, you're dead right. You're dead right. And, um, and obviously, depending on the breed, is going to depend upon you know which of those activities he's going to enjoy doing the most, isn't it? You know, he's going to enjoy chasing stuff or, or um, or finding it or, or bringing it back, you know, um, or maybe it's all of those things if he's a hunter, point and retriever or whatever. But but it, but it's uh, you know you, you don't need to be overly sort of creative. I'll tell you a little story about um, I can't remember even how many years ago it was, but when I used to um, go to my local park, this is way before I even got into dog training. I used to, there was a, there was a guy um, who used to have a, a collie and he used to have one of those chuck it sticks and he used to just do the chuck it thing with the, with the dog, with the ball, coming backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards over and over again. And at the time I used to think, oh my God, how boring for that dog. Um, and it wasn't until years later that I sort of realized, you know what, Dom, you were a complete idiot then. That dog was completely happy. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was getting rid of his energy. He was engaged with the owner and he was doing a, a repetitive task that meant the owner could exercise him anyway. You know what I mean? The dog wasn't yeah. bothered about my dogs or anything else. So I think we kind of overcomplicate it sometimes and think that we have to be constantly providing new things. For, and, and, you know, if, if, you, if, you're in, if you're opposite to me, if you're into that, if you want to learn how to do these things because you want to learn them, then wonderful, you know, and your dog will come along with you on the journey if you keep making it interesting for him. But uh, for the majority of pet dog stuff, just find a few simple games, play them regularly, your dog will just be following you around the park like the Pied Piper. And it's exactly the same as my two pet dogs. They're all they want is a bit of engagement, and that's it. My two workers are a different world because, and I think people need to remember this as well. You start making things more advanced and more difficult. The dog wants more stimulation. Then, if I go and throw a ball on a field for my German Shepherd, she's like, "Cool, what are we doing now? Next, next behaviour, next behaviour." If I go throw a ball for, oh, I mean, ground web chess a ball. I can take my ground on a field and just stand there, and it yeah. just runs around. And then he's like, oh, let's go home, I'm ready. I'm done. Yeah, three laps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. <laughs> that's, that's his constant state of affairs. Typical, all the time. typical pause. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah so like you say, and, and I, think, um, I, think we get, I think we get a lot of problems when... Uh, and this is not a new problem. <laughs> this this is not a new thing. This, but you know, pet dog owners just not thinking enough about the kind of dog that they're going to get. You know, and what and what that dog's going to need. Um, because we all like cuddling on the couch, don't we? You know, we all like watching Coronation Street or whatever, or EastEnders or whatever it is um, <laughs> on the couch with the dog. But you know, you have to, and, and any dog will enjoy doing that. 
to a degree <laughs> but yeah. you know as long as you give him what he needs as well you know what I mean as long as you give him and and the more highly bred a dog you get you know the more you're gonna have to give him and um and if you don't then we get things like you know chewing the house up you know or, or you know the behavior start coming out in in other ways that uh that mean often you know, they're going and we'll end up getting rid of them yeah yeah and it and that I'm not gonna say no it does annoy me it does annoy me <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't annoy me, it frustrates me, but it just really pisses me off. My dog's doing it because he doesn't like me. It's like, no, your dog's not doing it because you took him out once in the last seven months for a seven-minute walk in the rain. And he's bored <laughs> shitless. Like, do something enjoyable with him. I'll stop ripping your house up. And it really <laughs> is that simple, isn't it? It really is. It really is, yeah. And um, I think people want people want the secret, you know. and uh, I, the, or the, or the, People are looking for a, a, the secret, a different kind of secret. And there isn't one. I don't think there is one anyway. You know, if I've I discovered the secret and you have as well, it's that. It's it, what I say in the book: BMFI, be more fucking interesting. You know, if you if you just be a bit more fucking interesting to your dog, then you, you he'll look at you more. He'll follow you around more. He'll want to be with you. You know, you won't have to be all Caesar Milan and in having the dog being fearful of you. He'll do stuff for you because he wants to, because he enjoys spending time with you, even when there are squirrels and pheasants and, and other dogs there. You know, he'll, he'll choose to be with you, and that's pretty fucking it's, special, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's like that video you put up. I think it was Barry, actually. You did, like, um, a little docudrama thing about his paycheck in the paper and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the weird, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's what we... Um, so, so that, you know, getting back to the sort of, I suppose my sort of method, if you like, fi find this thing that the dog likes, you know, whatever it might be, a, a tennis ball, uh, a custard cream, whatever it is, you know, you can't give him too many of those, but, but you know, you want it, something that the dog likes, and then get it, get him, get his drive up for it, get him motivated, get him following you around the room, and then start making him do stuff for it, you know, make him, make him do a sit, make him do a down, that's his wages, then, isn't it? You know, make him walk to heel, make him come back. You know, what I mean? it's like it's not that hard, is it? You know, once you start plugging it together like that. Um, but so many people, and I, and you know, I've been there as well. You you miss uh, you, people contact me, guy, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I've got this dog. Um, she she uh, he's a brilliant dog in the house. Nightmare outside. Uh, we go to the woods. I let her off. She disappears. Twenty minutes. I'm panicking. I'm frustrated. Uh, she's pissing me off. You know, I, I'm I'm scared. I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to lose this dog. Uh, He's not interested when we when we go outside. I say, okay. Um, well, what does he like? Does he like food? Oh, yeah, he loves food. Absolutely loves food. He'll do anything for food. Okay. Have you thought about taking some food with you when you go out? Oh no, I never thought of that. And, and uh, but you know, sometimes it takes the dog trainer to to put the sort of two and two together, doesn't it? You know. And, yeah, for sure. And, and I think it's hard for us and anyone in the dog world that you know that's not just a pet owner. People don't think like that. You know, mm -mm. we immediately mm -mm. see it as you work for me. To gain reward, um, but I don't think a pet owner sees it. You know, food goes in the dinner bowl at five thirty in the evening, and that's it. That's what food's for. Mm, it goes down. Right. And it. Oh, yeah. cat's got a question. Um, do you remember what year you went to the Darlington John Rogerson course? Um, probably twenty. I'm guessing twenty thirteen. There you go, cat. Twenty thirteen. Or twenty fourteen. It would be either of those two. Or 2014. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're, we're, me, uh, me and details. We'll she thinks she was there, that's all. Oh, right. What's her surname? Clark. Catherine Clark. I don't oh, think no, I she was 2010. She was 2010. You must know her. Oh, she was on the other day. You, you were here. Never mind. Okay. You said, oh, no, it was 2010. Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> Thanks, <sir. laughs> Um... What else have we got? Pet owners. Say it again. What else have we got for pet owners before we get onto the business side of things? <laughs> um, I mean, I think we touched upon it um, before with the, uh, you, you touched upon it with the, you know, mention about scent work, you know. Um, I'd, I've done, um, uh, because of my influence with Dave, obviously Dave was a, uh, he was a police dog handler, you know, so a couple of his mm -hmm. dogs were sort of narcotics and, um, money and uh, firearms detection dogs, you know, so um, so so that was really interesting for me to see that um, side of it, and when I got my Cocker Spaniel, Sydney, it was one of the first things I wanted to do with Sid, with um, Dave was, you know, learn about scent work and stuff, um, so we try and make that a big part of, and, and Sydney will indicate on um, gun oil and stuff as well, just for fun, you know, but um, 
And uh, even uh, Barry used to as well. Actually, I haven't started it with Derek yet, but Barry used to do that as well. Barry, Barry would indicate. Barry, it, yeah, Doug de Bordeaux, He would do. He would. Um, he would do a bit of tracking. And um, we did Love tracking that. at Dave's. Dave's was mind was blown, but very Barry was very food motivated, you know. So he was. Uh, he would do a bit of tracking for it, and you know, it doesn't take a dog to board. You don't t have to do very much scent work with the dog de Bordeaux to wear him out. <laughs> With I bet a tiny you don't have to little... do much of anything with a Dr. Bordeaux to wear them out. <laughs> yeah, with a tiny little <laughs> pea brain. Um, so, so getting getting some kind of scent work into your into your dog's life, you know. Um, I would just yeah. say, you know, a little bit of play, you know, using the food a bit better, like what we said. You know, don't put it in a bowl, put it in a Kong, or or take it with you, you know, or just sit and feed him by hand and talk to him and stroke to him. You know, um, it, it, it'll, it, it'll transform your relationship doing that for three or four days. A little bit of play and a bit of scent work as well. So get him to find it, you know, either hide a Kong, hide a toy. Um, and it just, it, it, I mean, we've done sort of tracking days with Dave and um, scent detection days as well, which we've hosted together. Um, and it, it, it's amazing seeing these dogs. So the, the dogs come in with the owners and they're quite, some of them are a bit reactive, you know, some of them are a bit sort of too excited about the other dogs. And over the course of the day, as you as you do more and more with them, you start to get them into it and they start to understand what they have to do with their nose. That, you know, they, they completely switch off to all the other dogs, you know, and it just, it's like this. And scent work is a, it, you're like, you're helping the dog along, aren't you? You know, as the owner, even if you're just, you know, helping him where to find it and stuff, it's like, it, 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 and it's so easy. It's so easy to do. <laughs> um, simple stuff. You know, obviously the heart tracking and things, and or, you know, searching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You know, so just giving your dog a little bit of an outlet because he's going to use that nose, isn't he? You know, the the nose is um, the nose is going to get him into trouble most of the time. <laughs> you know, he's going to be finding stuff. He's going to be you know pinching chicken legs off the countertop, or or finding half-eaten pizzas and stuff underneath the park benches and all this kind of thing. So he's, he's going to, and especially like beagles and things. You know, the beagle. We did a at the seminar that I did um, uh, up in Scotland uh, a few months ago. Uh, a lady asked if um, she said she had a beagle and she'd started to do some scent work with him, um, but she was worried that it was going to um, encourage him to use his nose more and, and, and get him out of control. You know, I was like, don't worry, but he's going to do that anyway. Do you know I mean, his, yeah. nose, his nose is going to hit the floor anyway, whether you want it to or not. Even if you, you know, unless you chop it off, that nose is going to hit the floor. So for God's sake, yeah, try and get him doing something where he's finding finding something that you've put down for him, and, and then you can. Well, it becomes. It's just the same interaction. Here. Instead of him just sticking his nose down and traveling 15 miles in the woods, he's searching. With you and part of your game, like yeah, for sure, yeah, Atlanta. exactly. And 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 I try and sort of just again getting back to the whole pet pet dog thing, um, and uh, trying to give people some strategies to help them to to better control their dogs in the park, you know, because most pet dog owners they have a pretty good relationship in the house. It's it's when they step outside, isn't it, that all yeah. the problems occur. So so f you know if you just practice playing a couple of find it games in a two or three different areas of your local park what you normally go to it, within a week you know your, your dog will be looking forward to that game when you get there you know and 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 rather than him sort of looking to see like well who can i go and pester now he'll be looking at you won't he you know and you know what when are we going to play this game dad you know where's this where's this thing you want me to find and um and it just gives you so much more control without having to have a lead on him all the time yeah and it's a big thing that i see dog owners for me, it's, it's like a, a vicious circle. They can't let their dog off the lead because they're a nightmare. And the dog gets more stressed, so they get let off the lead even less. Mm. And they just go round and round and round. Yeah. And like you say, something yeah. as simple as a little bit of engagement. For most dogs and most people, because let's face it, most people haven't got a working line Malinois at home. They've got, <laughs> I don't know, a Shih Tzu or something. Yeah, oh, yeah for sure, yeah. How... Would you, because obviously, like my Shih Tzu, he'll play Tug, not really into it. How would you do engagement games with food that's not based on Find It games? I would, um, I mean, you can, this is, again, this is something else that I learned from Dave, and you, you can make the food, you know, you can make the food come alive in the same way mm -hmm. as, you, as you do a toy, you know, yeah. so in the same way as you, 
you know, if, if you just have a toy and you shove it in the dog's face and you say play, you know, the dog's going to go like this, isn't he? And think, oh God, what's going on? But if you if you if you get the toy and you wave it in front of him and you say, oh look what I've got, look at this, isn't this interesting? Bouncy, bouncy, chuck it in the air a couple of times, hide it under your arm, walk about a little bit. Pretty soon the dog's going to be saying, well, what is that interesting thing that you've got there that I, I want to be a part of now? Well, you can do exactly the same thing with food. So rather than just being uh, you know, like a treat dispenser, you know, and, or click treat, click treat, some of them, you know, or even just treat, 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 and yeah. doling it out, you know, you can make it come alive. And, and the more you do that, it, it'll increase the, the, the value of the treat in the dog's eyes, you know, and, and, and again, same thing, you know, oh, look what I've got, a tiny little piece of chicken, look, da, 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 and the dog's following you around the room, you know, and then it's like, okay, what can we get you to do to get this bit of chicken? Um, and, you know, I'm a big fan of luring, I like, um, just because I'm lazy and I think it's quick, you know, I want people to get to learn how to do it quickly. Um, so I'm a fan of luring, you know, a few simple tricks, a sit, a down, a spin, through the legs, you know, catch it. That's like, you know, if you, if you can get a Shih Tzu to do a spin, a sit, a down, through the legs and a catch it with a treat in the park, you know, you obviously have to practice this at home first. You're going to have, you're, you're going to have really good control of that Shih Tzu, I guarantee it. Well, you know, I had a, Literally, almost every other pet owner, I guess. Say that again. You know, you, if if you can get your shit suit to do that, you're ahead of 99.9% of pet owners. Yeah. You'll be, the envy, like, you'll be the envy of the dog park, won't you? Exactly. <laughs> okay, half past. So we're half an hour in. Right. Some of you are going to love this because there are a few dog business owners and that world on here. Some of you are going to hate this because you wanted to talk about dog training, so I probably just keep it all the fucking hard lines in it. So well, what I we think... should do, Jay, is we should do we, we should do we should do the last two minutes back on dog training again of the thing, so that'll just keep them hanging around till the end. Yeah, like a, a really special a special <laughs> two minutes at the end. We'll tell you the secret. In two, minutes, in two minutes to fall, we'll tell you the secret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Right, I don't know about you. For me, this is really hard to coherently... Look, look, this, this is what I mean. I don't think that there's not a blueprint on how to run a company, because if there was, everybody would be rich and nobody would be at your inner circle. Correct? True, yeah, for sure. I think because there's not, should we start at day dot Fred, not the German Shepherd Fred, the other Fred, has... <laughs> Started up a dog training business just now. Fred's a dog training business. He has nothing else. Where do we go? Okay. I think the first thing Fred needs to understand is that he, he needs he needs to learn about marketing because um, it ain't enough to just be a, a great trainer. You know, uh, you, obviously you should be striving to be a better trainer all the time uh, or a better dog walker or, or whatever you, you, you know, the dog mm -hmm. business that yeah. you're in. Um, but you have to you have to learn about you know marketing um, because your the dog training really you should just be able to do it automatically you know what I mean this thing that you need to do is get people into your business and the dog business is is huge it's vast it's growing it's vociferous it's uh, almost recession proof you know there's there's al almost no amount of money that people won't spend on their pets either to get them fixed with training or to do activities or, you know, on spangly little bandanas or bowls and all this kind of thing, treats, you know. So so the, the pet niche is, is, is growing and it uh, can be very, very profitable. But because of that, there's, there's a lot of competition out there now and there's competition's only going to increase even more. Um, so it's, it will behoove you to, to really uh, accept the fact that you, that you do need to up your game with the marketing because I know lots of dog trainers who are way better dog trainers than me who are like eating beans every night or they're way better dog walkers than me um, but they're they're working all hours God sends and they're pissed off and they're not enjoying their business very much at all so that'd be where I would probably start <laughs> yeah for sure and I think the next bit for me is like let, let's use Fred's dog training as an example but like you say it's the same in walking or grooming or pet shop or whatever it is to be fair, it's the same in anything. You know, like you're a mechanic, is the same. Yeah. Um, for me, the next place I would want to look at is who are you as a business owner? You know, are you training protection dogs? Are you training, you know, like you do, pet owners that want to be able to walk around the park? 
Are you doing yeah. advanced behavioral yeah. stuff? Obviously, you know, in my business, uh, nine out of ten people that come through the door have got dog or human aggression problems. That's my thing. But I still get people that come through and they're like, oh, I want to teach my dog to track, or I want to teach my dog to, I don't know, insert X here. Yeah. But my yeah. thing that I push on is behavior modification. You know, like, mm -hmm. my dog's an absolute shit. I can't deal with it anymore. I'm going to smash it over the head with a sledgehammer. Please fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. No, it, a really good point. Yeah. So you you have to. Uh, next is you have to. You, you don't have to, but you will. It'll be easier for you to stand out from all that competition out there if you do niche down to something. If you niche down to, to one particular area, ideally that will be something that um, you are good at, <laughs> that you enjoy doing. You know, because it's no good just going into something because. What well, you can do, I suppose, if you just because you think there's money there, but you, you know, if, if you get your marketing right, see, this is what I tell people when they join the inner circle. Once you get the marketing right, they start doing a bit of lead generation and they start, you know, um, do, doing the right kind of things. The business will grow, so why wouldn't you want to grow it doing something that you enjoy doing? Do you know what yeah, I mean? sure, so I pick think, the thing that you enjoy. And I think the people that the go just because oh the money's there, when the money's not very clearly there anymore, or you've got to put an extra four hours a day in to, to grow because hustle and grind, it suddenly becomes shit and it's like, oh, there wasn't actually that much more money here. I should have done what I enjoyed. Because you're going to put way more work in and get more success. Mm -hmm. And you'll get better at it and you'll get known for being that person and then you'll, you know, your prices will increase anyway. So, yeah, so, okay. so like niching down, so niching down to something. And then I would, I would almost always be advising people to go higher end with their training, you know. So you should... But that there's at least anybody does this that's the thing you know so and and there's a there's a top a middle and a bottom provider for everything in every town and you know I hear this excuse all the time or oh, my town's different my clients are different no they're not you know there are there are there are people driving Ferraris and Range Rovers and Porsches even in Sunderland Jay. Um, so you know that there, there, there's <laughs> all right not many but you know what I mean there's there's it's just you. there's it's just you driving the road. <laughs> just me. Yeah. With your yeah, small, small tour of seminars. <laughs> the, uh, you know, but it's the same for there's high end uh, restaurants and there's greasy spoon cafes that are churning out for a quid each. This is exactly the same with dog training and dog walking. You know, you you've got the pa it, it, Dan Kennedy says in his book No Market and No BS Market into the Affluent. There's no, it's no more different. It's no harder to market yourself at the top end of the market than it is to market it to the bottom. You know, all it really takes is the like the, having the cojones to go for it. You know, or the lady cojones. It is, um, it is literally just that as well, isn't it? Because when I first started up here, I was equivalent the cheapest trainer in this town, and now I'm almost double the next most expensive. You know, like, so it's, there's a guy here, I'm almost double per hour. I haven't seen any loss in income or loss in number of clients. I've seen a gain in income. But, you know, inquiries, they haven't changed. I've just changed my position in the market. And they're like, oh, that guy's yeah. good. Yeah. It might not be any better than the other guy. I just portray that I'm better than you. Yeah, no, objectionally, no. You, you, I mean, you will be because I know you're good. But it, it, it's the same with us, you know. Objectionally, it's not that much different to what everybody else is doing. But it's how you... Just by, in fact, this is something that I kind of did right with my own business, really. So I'll use that as an example. When I started Pack Leader Dog Adventures, I chose to go into the, I chose to make it different. I chose to um, offer the adventure, the hour and a half adventure, rather than the 15 minute, the 30 minute, 45 minute walks. Um, and I charged a premium for that, even then, you know. So I charged double what everybody else was charging. Um, and I, I walked the dog for like an hour, an, a half an hour extra. Um, but that was enough for me to, which has got a kickstart at everything else that I've really ever done in my business, you know, just by being high end and being a little bit niched. Um, but, you know, people start up all the time and they, they look at um, what other people are doing and they say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll charge what he's charging. Or then they might think, oh, actually, he's been doing it a bit longer than me, so I can't charge that much, yeah. you know. But like... Just because someone's been doing it five or ten years longer than you, don't mean to say they're five or ten years better. You know, if that's the case, they'll always be five or ten years better than you, won't they? So you're, you're always going to be like at the bottom of the pile. It's possible to start and jump right in at the top. And, and that's exactly what I did with my own uh, dog adventure business. So how, what tips have you got for people on how, how do you position yourself as a market leader as opposed to Jay's shit dog training around the corner? 
<laughs> so I would say uh, there are a few things that you can do quite easily. One of them would be niching, like what we said, you know, so specialise down. So rather than just being Dom's dog walking, I could be Dom's uh, cocker adventures or something like that, you know, and that would, um, that means all the cocker spaniel owners in Sunderland, they, I'm going to stand out, I'm Anna, like a beacon, like a lighthouse for for them for for their dogs and because it's more specialised means I can charge a premium for that and this is the same with the training too you know you could do exactly the same thing with the training um, so so be, so be specialised um, everyone we talked about this before as well people shy away from this you know they think because they think because oh well if I do that if I niche down to that thing then I won't get this thing over here that you know but and to a degree yeah you won't but you don't want that thing either you know you want to be known for being the guy who does this, the guy who does recall, or the guy who does adventures, or the guy who does uh, puppy training or something. Do you know what I mean? Because we're only talking about, really, for most dog trainers, <clears throat> I mean, you might have aspirations to do online stuff and whatnot, and you should do as well eventually. It should be part of your business plan to have some sort of evergreen um, passive income. But initially you want you just want to be killing it in your town you know you want to be and it's not that hard to be known for being the best at something in your town no, even a big no. town. i think a lot of people as well people i speak to even here and you know near here sort of in the vicinity of as far as you are they really think it's like a massive thing like uh, stupid things they walk into pets at home in scarborough and they're like oh we just had seven of your clients in it's like because i live in a small town small town as you do, like you, it's so easy to stamp your foot very, very early on. You know, you go and do 10 dog adventures, cool, they're all going to speak to 10 people each, and I've got 1,000 people who know you are in week one. And then you repeat that over six months, and, you know, immediately you're up there. It's like Kat's, she designed the, um, I don't know what it's called, uniform for the team for the agility people. Uh -huh. It immediately stamps her. Uh -huh. um, yeah. There's a few, there's a few people on here that are doing the same thing, but for the people that haven't done it yet, it's a lot easier than you think it is, you know, to get your talent. Obviously, if you're looking for worldwide recognition, you know, to be, insert your favourite trainer here, uh -huh. you're talking a much bigger game. The other thing I really want to brush on, for positioning and for becoming that guy in the town, I'm a massive fan of taking all my best ideas and giving them away for free. Uh -huh. You're like. Here's how to teach X. Full right up, massive video, all good stuff. Because most people are going to go away and go, that guy's really good. And then they're going to put your standards on. And then <laughs> ring me in three days. Because they can't, the bottom line is people can't be asked to do it themselves. They need me to go, come on, you got this. They already know the information. You give away a lot as well, don't you? You know, with your videos and all the ones on yeah, the, that series that you did on the beach. And... Yeah, 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 we do. yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of it's about... Um... Like so, you're building a tribe, basically. You know, you're building, you're trying to build a tribe of people who are, who are aligned with you, who believe in the same kind of things that you believe in. They have similar um, ideals and values to what you have, because ideally they're going to be the best clients. You know, we, we, the yeah, best sure. clients that we ever have are the people who are most like us. You know, and how do you attract those clients? Well, you put more of your personality into your marketing. You talk about things that you're passionate about. You know, and, and you disagree with things that you that you disagree with. You know. So in my book, I talk about um, the fact that, you know, I don't think dogs should play together. You know, if you're a pet dog owner and you want to have an easy life with your dog, you shouldn't really let your dog ass around with other dogs. And you certainly shouldn't be taking your little puppy pie. Um, yeah. But yeah, you agree. But I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people don't. And I'm co totally cool with that, you know, because I'm not after... I'm not after attracting fluffy bunny dog trainers into my world because they ain't never going to pay me any money. I'm after the person yeah. who's got a dog who who was in the same position as I was before, where they've got this dog that they love, but they've got no control over him, and they want an easy way to get control. So, I, that, 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 you know, so putting your personality into it, assuming that you have one, of course, is, is the easiest way to, to sort of align yourself with your tribe. Then what I will be doing is I will be producing content, like what you said, um, it, you know, Facebook Live, YouTube, blogs, emails and stuff like that. I'll be doing that, but, but I'll be trying to funnel people and get them like away from Facebook, away from YouTube, and, and onto my, my email list, really, you know? Or however, or a, an actual physical mailing list, whatever, however you want to do. You're massive on email marketing, aren't you? So I assume you do a lot of, do you use lead pages? 
Uh, no, I don't. I've just got my own sort of landing page, but I have used lead pages in the past, yes. Same. Is it, it, I assume your landing page is the same idea, though? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Right, so for everyone that doesn't know about email marketing, basically what you do is you put a video up that's Dom's five tips on how to stop your dog running away. <laughs> don't do a video like that because that would be shit. Like, put a good one <laughs> Then they, click, they watch the video, and then you're like, to get five more tips, go to my website. You get to their website, and it says, download your free copy of Dom's Massive Dog Training World.com. They put their email in, and now you've got you've got a way of communicating with them that's not. I really like your work, Dom. From there, you start sending follow-ups. But please, God, don't send follow-ups like, do you want to book a session? Here's my new price list. Black Friday offer. No one fucking cares at all. <laughs> send things like... Five more tips on how to be awesome. Um, ten engagement send, games. Send, sto send stories and stuff. You know, you talked about before. People don't want information. They want to be, they yeah. want to be entertained, don't they? You know. So try and entertain them. You know. Yeah. Put your, put yourself into it. You know. Talk about your fuck ups and your and, and your successes as well. Talk about some things that you've been doing with clients. Talk about talk about X Factor. Or I'm a celebrity, and you know, linking into dog training or something. You know, it's quite easy to do once you once you get into the swing of it. But um, how often do you yeah. send emails as well? I, I, I email daily. I've got two lists that yeah. I email daily at the moment, yeah. And uh, I mean, sometimes more than, you know, more than daily, but um, yeah. And I mean, you use Aweber? I use Infusionsoft now. I've switched over. I, I was on Aweber for a couple of years, though, yeah. Aweber's perfect, yeah. Why did you stop? Because I've got a lot of, um, <clears throat> I've got like a few different sequences now, and with that go off into other sequences and stuff so it's uh it got quite sort of complicated do you know what I mean so we, we switched over to that and uh and it's better for tagging and stuff and yeah. as you can all see Dom's far better at email marketing than I am because I just <laughs> use and I have one no no it's just a bit more it's just a bit more in depth if people wanted I mean I've got a um I've got a free email series for the business side of things if people um can I plug that Jay? Yeah, plug everything. Yeah. yeah um, if people go to um, growyourpetbusinessfast.com, you can sign up for my 33 uh, free tips. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, so you can see exactly how this works <laughs> because that'll take you to a landing page that you'll uh, be able to sign up for my tips with. And then you get 33 emails, and uh, they, they'll help you with your business. And then uh, as the emails go on, I'll try and sell you stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, but, and that's the point. You don't work with him, do you? But you know Paul, don't you? Paul Moore. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the guy who got me into email marketing. I was in his marketing muscle inner circle. Mm. He has an inner circle, everyone, that's about personal trainers marketing. And I was in it because I was a dog trainer and it just seemed to apply exactly the same. <laughs> um, so he's like, offer them this new fitness product. And I'm like, oh, dog training product. <laughs> it's exactly the same game. Um, in your, marketing in your is email, marketing is marketing. Exactly, yeah. And the joy that you've all got once you start applying this is, you know, 10 years time, you might not want to be a dog walker anymore. Cool, you can open up a cafe. It's exactly the same. Exactly the same, yeah. In your email, growyourpetbusinessfast.com 33 email thing, do you get into the technological side, you know, like how to build a lead page, what software to use, or is it more to do with write these kind of emails they're just kind of general tips. So we talk about um, premium pricing, talk about 80-20, talk about uh, premium positioning, and then follow-up, you know, the type of follow-ups that you can do, talk about niching down. So it's like a general email series, basically going into a bit more detail than, than like what we talked about now. Then at the end of that, like the, the inner circle, or sw the book's probably a good step to take after that, the Walk Yourself Wealthy book. And then, like, the inner circle goes into more detail. You know, people, it's a similar thing to Paul's, I guess. You know, Paul's market and muscle. Exactly. It's the same yeah. thing, but it's just for, uh, for pet business owners. So, you know, that we, we, they can submit stuff for critique and I'll help them out. And, you know, so it's uh, we just shepherd them, just bring them in and show them how to do it. Show them how to be as awesome at the marketing as they are at the dog stuff, you know. And yeah. some, of them, some of them are killing it already. It's only been going like three, four months. But some of them are they're writing daily emails, you know, that they're, uh, they're doing really well. I'm really proud of them. And they're, they're the people that you want, aren't they? Because I think it's the same in dog training as it is in marketing. You can only give people the information, aren't you? They've got to put some bollocks to go and do something with it, you know, yeah. to get results. Yeah. You telling me to do daily email and me going, oh, yeah, thanks, Dom, and then putting these tenders on again, 
I'm still going to be broke tomorrow. Like, it's just the way it is. Like, it's just <laughs> fucking hard luck. There's nothing yeah, yeah. I can do about that. If you haven't got the spine to go and work, then hey, that's right. And that's, that's why I'm that's why an hour three times a week. That's right. That's right. That's why I'm quite polarizing in my emails, you know. Um, in the 33 ideas, you know, they're, they're, they're there to put people off as much as they are there to, to pull, pull people in, you yeah. know what I mean? So, um, we occasionally well, like you, you, get somebody... drive, hmm? you You want your people that work like you do with the same views you got. Like, I don't want Susan from down the road who thinks all dogs should live in bed all day. <laughs> We're not going to do well together at all. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not. So by sending them emails, you can push Susan out, can't you? Right. Yeah, yeah, so definitely, yeah. And you know, you could probably do a similar thing with in a Facebook group and stuff. I just prefer email because it's, it, it's like gives me content that I can reuse, and it, it's like away from Facebook's a very noisy medium, isn't it? To, um, a horrendous to try and, like, build a relationship and stuff. You have to be really consistent, as as you are, you know. I think it's very noisy. However, I think currently, in my opinion. Facebook paid ads are the lowest price advertising media full stop right now. Yeah, I would agree with that, you, yeah. I would agree. Yeah, yeah, I would you agree, use yeah. them to get them on your landing page? That's how I, exactly what I do. Yeah, so I use it to get people off Facebook because, and then I have the conversation with them off Facebook. Um, and, and, you know, so the big you, mistake a lot of pet business owners would make is they would do a Facebook ad that would send people to the Facebook page. Do you know what I mean? Where, where, where the, there's nothing really happening, you know what I mean? Generally. So do you... Um, Put a Facebook ad up, get my 10 killer awesome tips on dog walking, take them to your landing page. Oh, no, wait. Do you pay to advertise that 10 killer tips? So, yeah, I would do both. I would probably do both. I would probably, I would probably have it. I would, I would, I would, I would, I always normally have paid ads running almost all the time for like two yeah. years. I've, it, you know, as much as it's nice to have SEO and organic, you know, and if you're getting it, wonderful, but it's, you know, you, you paid stuff. You get, you're gonna get eyes on it. If 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 you do what we said at the start, if you're really targeted about who you want to be getting in, about what your service is, about what your problem is that you can solve. Um, and Facebook's so cheap, aren't it? Like you can go, what? How much? How much a day are you spending on Facebook ads? I'm probably spend. I'm probably spend at least a five or a day. Usually a ten or a day. Um, but I mean, That's you could you could boost a blog or something for like a quid a day, you know? But three hundred quid a month. That will give you a high conversion rate, I imagine. But you know, in six months' time, when you've built a relationship of your email list, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's yeah, what a lot yeah. of people miss. I get people ringing me and they're like, "Oh, I spent three hundred pounds this month, and I've got fifty people on my email list, and nobody's booked in." It's like, cool fucking story. Keep emailing them for a year. They're yeah, booking yeah, that's year. right. That's right. To 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 change it back. Actually, this is going to be really cool. You like this, Jay? Um, to change it back. To bring it back to the dog training. Yeah, there are a lot of similarities between you know, growing a business and the whole dog training thing, because you, with the dog, you know, with the dog, you want to get the dog's attention first, yeah, as we talked about Fred at the start, you get Fred's attention with the toy, and then, you know, you need to build up a bond with that dog, don't you? you need to build up a relationship, you can't just get the dog's attention with the toy, go back to the park where he always runs off to play with the dogs, and expect him not to do that, because he will do that, he will do that naughty thing that oh, he's been doing. Yeah, um, so so it takes a bit of, it takes a bit of time. Sometimes it takes a long time to build up a relationship and get the dog regularly doing things for you, so that he is eventually well behaved in the park. Well, it's the same with this is what lead generation does. You know, you you build up a relationship with people, you get them on your list, and then over time you warm them up, and you you pull them in, and and then eventually they convert and they buy something. You know, that might be after a month, might be the same day. You know, it might be six months' time, a year's time, or whatever. You know, I've got people on my in my dog training in a, uh, my dog business in a circle now. A couple of people who joined my pet my dog training one like 18 months ago. Joined that one, then left it after a few months or whatever. But they stayed on my list, and now they, you know, and then 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 they're back in again. You know what I mean? So it's like. Uh, and you know, some of them have, have been to like the boot camp in Sunland that we did, a two-day boot camp. That was like an expensive event, you know. So, and it's, it's just like you, you're right what you say. You can't, you can't expect to have like an immediate return. Although it's nice if you can get one. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you will get them, but it's out of right place, right time, not out of intelligent lead generation. Yeah, yeah. You'll get the. I mean, even with lead generation, you know, if you do lead generation, you 
you'll still get the people who need you right now, you know, the people who are desperate for your service like that minute, they'll still phone you up and, and ask for you, you know, they won't say, oh, I've signed up for the emails, that'll be enough, they'll, they'll, they'll say, fucking hell, I want to get on the phone to the J, I need his help now, you know, my dog's running away or he's biting people and I need help with this, but with lead generation, you'll also get all the other people who like aren't quite ready to buy just yet. Okay, question from James about dog training, not about marketing. Cool, I'll allow that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How do I make my dog more engaged with food? He's engaged with it in the house, but not when I take him outside in the garden. Well, you need to... Um, I would start getting him to do some things. I would start getting him to do some things with it in the house, and I would start feeding him crap stuff in the house. So feeding him some boring stuff in the house, and I would only feed him the interesting stuff outside. So, yeah, I like that. Um, people, uh, I'm not saying James has done this, but a lot of people, they'll think like, you know, you can just take the kibble, <laughs> you know, to the park and, and that's going to be enough, you know. Uh -uh, it ain't going to be enough, do you know what I mean? Um, you need some smelly stuff, you know. You need to buy a pack of cheap liver from the supermarket, dry it out in the oven on a bit of baking paper for an hour and a half on a low heat. And, you know, you, but trust me, your dog will be looking at you then. Then I would start with oh. something really simple. Go on, shoot, yeah. Or just fucking get over it and put it in your treat pouch and crack on anyway. Without... <laughs> uh, yes, I'm not as um, I'm not as I'm, I'm not I'm not into that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not a vegetarian either, but I'm not into that. <laughs> but the dog definitely would be. You're dead right. You're dead right. Um, or you know, or a, you know, a pack of chicken or something. Whatever the hell it is. Then I would start really small, and I would just be starting to reward eye contact. You know. So outside, you know, getting the dog, getting the dog's attention with a bit of chicken or a bit of liver, get him looking at you. As soon as his eyes lock onto you, tell him he's a good boy, and then whack, chuck the chicken or the liver at him. Repeat that five or six times. Do the same thing the next day. Then two, three days after that, you'll probably get to the point where you'll be able to lure your dog into a sit with with a um, with a bit of food. Also, by doing the stuff that we said before, you know, messing about with it, getting him to chase you around the the garden with it, you know, just being a bit more, being a bit more fun with him first. This is another problem that a lot of, well, actually, a lot of dog trainers have this problem as well, Jay. They they rush to sort of train the dog, you know, before before there's any kind of wagging of the tail and, and wide eyes. And again, I'm not saying James has done this, but you, you just invest in the relationship first. I think at some point now, everybody's done this, and even in much more advanced behaviors, like. Um... Is Kev still on? Um, yeah, Kev's still here. I don't think so the other day, Dom. Um, Kev bred and put all the, well, first year and a half into my Rottweiler. Right. Long before I got him. Um, he's just, oh, he's put his hand up to say he's here, okay. Um, <laughs> he's an awesome trainer, and I spoke to him the other day about this, and I had to go right back to, like, fucking heel position. Like he's got he's got God's obedience, but I had to go right back because I was getting this, and then three steps in he's like, oh fuck this shit, I'm doing. <laughs> like I'm really I'm bored of this. You're asking way too much, way too early. We have no bond together. You're some random guy who threw me in the back of your van. <laughs> I didn't like you for a month, and now you ask me to do all this work. So we've gone back to and even now today, I do a lot of engagement with him with a dog, do a lot of engagement with food, and a lot of like. Pay attention out there, you get absolutely nothing. You pay attention here, we're going to have a fight. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I would do that, James, as well. Slow down. That. Slow yeah, down. slow down. I would, I would practice things. If you're in the house still, I would practice things in different rooms. You know, I would get him used to doing things for you in different rooms. And then when you go outside, I would have him on a lead still. You know, I'd shortish lead. That's going to... He's not going to have any choice then but to listen to you. <laughs> you know, he's not going to be able to wander off anyway, basically, and start chasing butterflies and stuff. You know, you're going to be able to, yeah. if you work hard enough, it's going to be much easier for you to, to, to get his attention on you. Cool. I think that draws us to an end, Dom. Right, mate. I've really, really Thank enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. No, I haven't. No, just um, really awesome talking to you. I hope people took a bit of value from this. I, I've, I've really oh, enjoyed it. Plug all your things now. This is a good time. <laughs> all of the things. <laughs> all of them. Everyone. <laughs> so we got um, we got the dog here. training book. This is how to be a dog superhero. Ta da! Um, that's me there, back in the days when I was bulked up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is this is available on um, Amazon, Kindle, Audible. Uh, 
you can buy it from Amazon, but if you want to buy a copy, a signed copy from me, and I'll send you a free gift, you can go to www.mydogssuperhero.com. Uh, Does the chocolate still come with it? Actually, I've just run out. I've just run out. I've sent two books out today, and no, these guys didn't get any chocolate, so they'll be well pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Then for the pet business owners, this is my newer one, uh, Walk Yourself Wealthy, the quick, easy, and no BS guide to transform your passion for pooches into an insanely profitable and fun dog walking empire. Um, and in, in this book, I share the sort of five marketing secrets that you can use to really kickstart your dog training business and position yourself as the, the number one in town. Um, and you can, you can get that from, if you go to the growyourpetbusinessfast.com um, page, you can either buy that there, or you can get on the email list and I'll eventually try and sell you a copy <laughs> but that's available that's yes. also available on Amazon on Kindle and you can get on audible as well I think you listened to the audio book didn't you Jay? I did yeah I did enjoyed it a lot um, in a circle in a circle um, I would suggest just getting on the email list first um, I don't have a there's no real link to get on the inner circle you I would suggest getting on the email list at growyourpetbusinessfast.com and uh, see, see if you like it, see if you're interested in what I've got to say. If you are, send me an email, I'll send you a link to join the Inner Circle or you'll, you'll get an offer eventually to join. Um, but it's not for everyone, <laughs> you know, we don't, uh, not everybody likes it, not everybody, um, well, most people do. We filter out the... Um, the sensitive snowflakes. The sensitive snowflakes, <laughs> exactly right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's probably the best way to go with it. Um, Perfect. Right, Don. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome, my friend. Lovely talking to you. You too. I'll speak to you soon. Have a very Christmas. Yeah, you Can too. Can I say you that too. now? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the first, and <laughs> it? it's acceptable. <laughs> right, guys. I'll see you all soon. Take care, my friend.